good morning or afternoon or evening or night, uh, whatever the case may be. Kyle Belay here. I'm going to dive into another dime cast, this one on auto registration of Castle Windsor, the auto registration capabilities. Uh, you may have seen some dime casts on uh, Castle Windsor or Inject or Structure Map, um, and the common theme there is that all of your components need to be registered within that container. Uh, traditionally, that is done either with an XML file or through code, which is how I'm using here. Add the song service to this, the uh, to the interface. We add the interface and then register the song service against it. Same thing with our repositories and our uh, session builder. Pretty small uh, application here, but you can imagine it getting really uh, big. Quick overview of the application. I'm not going to go through the code in detail. It's up on Google Code, and there's a link attached to the Dimecast if you want to check it out. It's an MVC application. The dependencies are, there's uh, one that's got a dependency on an iSong service. The implementation of that has a dependency on an iSong repository. That has a dependency on an iSession builder. And it implements iSong repository, as well as subclassing from repository base, which itself implements iRepository T. Okay. The important thing is that we need to register all these dependencies in the container. Okay. We'll start with this piece of code here, the register controllers. This is an extension method that's courtesy of MVC contrib, and it's already uh, itself a auto an auto registration um, function. It's an extension method that loops through all of the controllers within a particular assembly and adds them to the container. So we don't need to worry about their, the controllers. They're already handled here. The advantage now, of course, is that when we add more controllers, we don't need to remember to come back here to this piece of code and add it to the container. It's already handled through this register controllers. We want that same capability with uh, the rest of these services. We want to add the services from our domain assembly as well as from our data access assembly. I'll start with the domain assembly here. The goal is that whenever we add new services to our domain class or to our domain assembly, we don't need to come back to this code here. And the key to that is component.register. Okay. This takes a list of um, registrations, which seems kind of cumbersome, but it's not really, because we can use the static methods on the all types. Okay, and we're going to register all assemblies on the Sirius de Flamingo domain. Okay, pretty easy. Also, um, pretty wrong. And we'll see how it fails here. We're not going to fail on the uh, home page because it doesn't actually have any dependencies. But let's go to this one here where it does, and it's going to say this iSong service was not registered. The reason being, all we've done is add the song service class to the container. We haven't actually said when somebody requests an iSong service, get the iSong service class. We don't really want to say from assembly name. We need a little bit more finer grain control. And for that, we use the pick method. Okay, This allows us to pick um, services and classes to add to the container based on um, criteria that we specify. And there's some helper methods, which we'll see here shortly. Namely, the pick method itself has from assembly named. Okay, so pick all classes from this assembly and add it to the container. It's basically the same thing, but we've also got with service. Okay, register each one to a service. And we have a nice little helper method that says from the first interface. Um, so I kind of stumbled through that, but the, the end result is that we're saying for each class in this domain, register it in the container against its first interface. Recompile that and we'll reload and see if we can actually find some songs sung by John. There we go. Now, um, what we've done here is we've also added the song class to the container. And we can go a little bit finer grain control. 
to make sure that that's not added, we could go in and say only ones that actually have an interface. Um, we'll show that example here with our repositories. Okay, so let's comment out our adding our repositories to the container and do some cutting and pasting and say for all of our repositories, for all classes in our data access assembly, register them with the container against their first interface. Okay, great. All done. Let's wrap it up and go home. Except that uh, the error that we see here is that iSong repository was actually not registered. The reason being, let's step through this. Let's see what was actually added to the container. Check out the graph nodes. Here's our song repository registered against this domain.i repository interface, not the i song repository, which is what we actually want. The reason for that is when we actually look at the song repository, yes, it implements i song repository, but it derives from repository base, which itself implements I repository. So this is the interface it's picking up. We need to get a little bit smarter about how we register these things. And luckily the with service class also has this select method. The select method gives us even finer control over which services each class is registered against. Okay? And what we want to register here is against the first non-generic interface that it finds on a class. Okay? This is a variable that we've de defined. It's actually a delegate using the service selector um, delegate from Windsor. And here, the interface for it is that it takes two parameters, two type parameters, type and base type. That's as of uh, this morning. This still seems to be a little bit in flux. Um, earlier versions just took one parameter, the type. We're going to ignore the base type here um, for, for the sake of brevity um, and say here's our type. When we get to this point we've got a song repository. What service on it do we want to register it against? Well we want to look at its interfaces. All the, those types of interfaces and we want to get all the ones that are non-generic. Okay, we could loop through them. Let's take advantage of the link here. Where interface is generic type is equal to false. Okay, oops. So now we've got a collection, um, thanks to link, of interfaces for this type that are not generic. Okay? If this collection actually has any values, then return the first one. We said the first non-generic interface. Okay? What it's complaining about here is that um, this isn't supposed to return a single interface. It has to return a collection of them which is also relatively new um, to this facility here. So we'll just wrap that up into an array. We'll return that um, an array of interfaces with just the one in it. If we don't find any interfaces that are non-generic, well, let's just return null. Um, deal with that when it, when it comes up. Okay. Come back here and see if we're now satisfying our dependencies. And from this list of songs that uh, various Johns and Johnsons have sung, we can see that it has. Okay. So um, through the magic of uh, Rewind, um, I'm sure you'll be able to go back and um, take a closer look at what I whipped through here very quickly. The end result is um, we've been able to pick all of the classes that we want from this assembly and register against the exact interface that we want. Okay? 
Now you may have to tweak it as you add more and they don't quite follow the pattern that you defined here, but um, that's you know up to your own particular interface. Um, I hope that was a uh, useful overview of the auto registration facility in Castle Windsor and we'll catch you next time.